Uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Ashik Khan from Entity Docomo, and uh, uh, four of our fellow presenters, all four of us, will walk you through to uh, open source project in OPNFV, which uh, born out of a requirement from uh, Telco, from Docomo, and has seen success in OpenStack. So we'll explain the requirement part, and then I'll hand over to the actual developers, uh, and they will introduce which little features they have developed in, in OpenStack, and then how they have realized the whole, feature, uh, whole <coughs> uh, features. So the requirement, I'll get straight to the point. So for telco nodes, this is a, a high-level architecture of 3GPP defined LTE EPC, EPC core network architecture, where you have this mobility management entity, which is responsible for controlling the rest of the core network. Every time you turn on your cell phone, your location registration goes to these nodes, and it stays there, it's anchored there. The mobility management entity, they will allocate different data path nodes, and through those data path nodes, your data traffic. Well, beyond this is the rest of the world. It goes out of, the, of, a, of an operator's network. So the point over here is each of these nodes hosts few hundred, few thousands subscriber session. If one goes down, few thousand customers will lose network connection. That's already bad enough. What happened consequently that all these few thousands um, cellular phones, cell phones, they try to reattach, re-register to the network at the same time simultaneously. These nodes cannot take that load. So it gets into an irrecoverable scenario where a single fault eventually cannot, will not allow the network operator to recover this node altogether. The, so what we require is very fast <coughs> failure, uh, failover policy and features in telco networks. Uh, from, to explain you a bit more, so this is, for example, you have the <coughs> cloud infrastructure over there, you have a cloud manager, OpenStack, and then you have the telco nodes, virtualized network function, VNFs, and in general, to avoid, to reduce service downtime to zero, there is, generally speaking, they're in a hot active standby mode. So there is this manager, VNF manager, which is responsible for switching from active to standby if there is any problem in the active node. Now, we have virtualized this. Docomo <coughs> rolled out its uh, commercial virtualized EPC last month. So by virtualization, you insert this virtualization layer, the hypervisors. So the hardware failures, failures over here is not directly visible to the VNF managers. So if there is a failure fault, the VNF manager, it takes time for the VNF manager to know about it, to actually do the act standby uh, switch over. And that's quite a long time, and we'll have a significant service downtime. We want to avoid that uh, through open source solution as we are using OpenStack in our commercial system. So what we need to do, what this project needs to realize is this. So if there is a hardware failure, it needs to be detected by OpenStack. Once it is detected, OpenStack actually needs to know which are the virtual machines affected and then which is its manager. There are many other virtual machines, virtualized network functions, they have their different managers. So OpenStack needs to detect who is the manager and once it knows which one is the manager, it needs to send, uh, send a notification to the manager and the manager <coughs> will do the active standby switch over. So the active standby switch over is an existing function that outside the scope, what we need to realize in this project, that was our requirement, is what I have shown in red, these three features. Now, how this <coughs> requirement was taken over by the open source community and how they have actually technically realized in OpenStack and most of these have been merged in the Liberty release, uh, release and Mitaka release already. So I uh, to uh, explain those from the developers who actually wrote the codes, 
I hand over to Ryota. From here, he will explain the architectural part. Thank you. Okay, I continue that one. Uh, I'm Ryota Mi from NEC, uh, working in OPNFA uh, as a doctor project, uh, project project lead, and I'm also the core developer of ALDH, uh, which is a, a telemetry project. Okay, I can provide more information about our high-level architecture for fraud management. So this is a, a high-level architecture of NFA, and on the left side, you can see the application and virtualized infrastructure. On the right side, you can see the manager of each uh, at the same as you may have. <laughs> and we're going to use uh, OpenStack as a virtualized infra infrastructure manager. And uh, we we'll detect the failure in the virtualized infra infrastructure, then notify it to the application manager. During that process, the information will be masked or, or transformed to hide the uh, low level of uh, physical resources and provide the failure as a virtualized resource. Uh, this is our focus. And this is more bit detail about the fault management uh, function block and the sequence. And you can see four components, um, monitor, inspector, controller, and notifier, which is more generic uh, terminology. So we may have a couple of uh, types of monitors to detect uh, uh, various failures. Could be occurred in the back and or private uh, uh, backend technologies. So in those monitors will detect the fault in the infrastructure and notify it to the uh, inspector as a raw fault event. And the inspector will recognize each fault as a failure uh, according to its uh, policy configuration and find out the affected resources and change the state. Uh, it's, it's owned by the controllers. So controllers would be a Nova, Neutron, and Cinda, and those controllers will uh, receive the change request from the inspector, and uh, it correct the state uh, of its own, and also it publish the not the state change to the OpenStack common bus, and. That Converse will be used for the billing or audit, and in this case, we use uh, consumer device notifier. Notifier will watch those notifications in the uh, OpenStack common bus, <clears throat> and if if some uh, failure event or the uh, state change are captured, it will notify to the. Uh, application managers it, according to the application uh, according to the alarm configuration the the alarm configuration will be uh, set by the application manager when it the application was deployed so it is the uh, way to capture various failure in the infrastructure and also a uh, very effective way to to notify the a failure to the user uh, in here, application manager. So now you can see the uh, OpenStack project name in the screen. Uh, we're going to use Nova, Neutron, Cinder as a controller uh, in this terminology. And we also use Cinemata and ALDH as a notifier here. And we have two options for the inspector, one for Congress and Bitfresh. And in this demo and uh, in, in this presentation, uh, we're going to explain more detail about how we can use Congress. So we have three challenges in OpenStack. And as you can see, we have to work uh, one on the multiple OpenStack project to realize uh, our 
design the architecture. And we also have to uh, let the OpenStack user know corresponding resource state properly and immediately. What we mean the property is that providing a, a failure as a, a state of virtualized resources. And we also have to support various OpenStack deployment flavor, which means someone may use normal network and some other use Neutron with OBS ML2 uh, plugin, and some may use uh, ODL, such kind of thing. And the operator may have uh, various policies. So we, working in the OpenStack, uh, proposing new features, we bring a, we wrote a draft blueprint in the spec and do code build development in the OpenStack community and it merged in the uh, Liberty and Mitaka cycles. So uh, I'm just providing a high level of information and we switch to the other developer and they'll provide you to uh, more detail about, about uh, how we can achieve the uh, enhancement of resource state awareness in you know, so Congress-based uh, inspections. So, Tommy. Hi. Uh, so my name is uh, Tommy Juvonen, and I work for Nokia, and uh, I'm going to tell you about the uh, resource state awareness changes that we have been doing in the past two cycles in uh, Liberty and Mitaka. And uh, the problem being that we have a uh, like, uh, use case of a high available application and uh, we haven't had enough state information. It hasn't been reliable and uh, it uh, changes too slow. So, I'm going to tell uh, changes that helps in that one. All right. So, here you can uh, see the uh, white box on the uh, on left. Uh, it's the compute node. And uh, if you are following the um, line over there uh, about the periodic update, so that was something that existed uh, before the um, uh, Liberty release. And uh, for us, we needed uh, immediate action uh, to uh, change the state. So uh, this periodic update wasn't enough. So uh, I proposed this uh, force down API to ANOVA so we can use this uh, external monitoring service to monitor uh, the compute node. And as uh, soon as uh, it recognizes any problem, uh, it can call the force down API. And uh, immediately the Nova compute state changes and you are ready to do what you need to do. Okay. But uh, even that was not enough for us. So, at the same time in uh, Liberty, and uh, now if we look uh, again those uh, red lines over there, uh, you can see the, um, what we had before. Uh, so you could have uh, pulled some uh, data and uh, you had the alarm evaluator that is pulling the database in a sealometer and uh, when it and uh, only then it uh, triggers an alarm, and uh, that's uh, not very fast process. It doesn't suit for us. So if you uh, follow then those uh, blue and orange line, lines there, uh, you can uh, see uh, what we did. Uh, so Rieta uh, proposed this uh, uh, event alarm evaluator, and uh, so you could uh, send a uh, event uh, to that and uh, through the AODH then with the event alarm evaluator you get an immediate alarm. Okay, that's cool. 
we are almost there. But uh, we still have a problem anyhow with the states. They are uh, not there if you are looking at the user point of view. Okay, so there's a lot of stuff in here. Um, so uh, if we look uh, again the white box over there, the compute node, uh, and uh, what was there before. Uh, so if you lose this periodic update uh, and you have uh, VMs running, so what do you have? Uh, when you cure your servers uh, via these service APIs, you see a VM still up and running and it might be totally different. So you didn't get the information you needed. So uh, to accomplish this uh, more awareness uh, here, uh, I proposed this uh, get valid server state uh, in Mitaka uh, to Nova. So now when uh, you are curing your servers, uh, you get this uh, host state. Host state there also. And uh, now if uh, the periodic update is there, you get it uh, as up. And yeah, cool, everything is up. Host is uh, uh, working and, and, and your VM states are showing as it should, up and running. And uh, then uh, if uh, you lose the periodic update, uh, by some means, then it's unknown. And unknown here means that you don't know. You just lost the periodic update, but why you might have your VMs running or they might not. And the cool stuff that we had was this uh, force down API. So now you have an external monitoring and you call that. And uh, that then indicates in this host state as down. Okay, cool. So you lost your Nova compute connection. So your VMs are still showing up and running. But now you get the cool stuff with the host state. Hey, actually host has a problem. Okay, I immediately now do a switch over. And uh, then also as part of doctor, we are interested about the maintenance. And uh, so you can see on the top right there, uh, admin can call this uh, service disable API. And if he uh, did that, uh, you can see the host uh, status maintenance. And uh, now in uh, Newton, I'm also uh, proposing a change here that uh, you can actually see the reason also in this. So then you get the more detailed maintenance uh, state. And then uh, just a special case that uh, if you are <coughs> creating kind of your server, uh, it doesn't yet have, have a host. so surely you don't have a host state. So then you get an empty string. And uh, okay, this is uh, in a sense not exposing the host. You get, don't get the host name or any, anything like that, but still uh, the normal uh, thing was seen that um, only uh, um, admin should have this API. So the default policy in Nova uh, is admin. But uh, now in Telco, uh, we need this information to users. So del Telco deployment, you change the policy JSON in Nova to have this hosted visible also for the owner of a server. Okay, so now we have all this thing and uh, it's uh, enabled now for something that uh, we soon hear from uh, Masahito. So I hand over to Masahito, thank you. Thanks for Tommy. Thanks, Tommy. Uh, I'm Masahito, working for NTT as a cloud architect, and uh, I am a core reviewer of Congress project in OpenStack. So, in my part, I want to show you how we achieve Congress-based inspection. And before starting my part, I want to do a quick survey for Congress project. So, everyone, please raise your hand. Raise, raise your hand. Yeah. Okay, thank you. And uh, no, no, no. Keep, keep your hand up. If you know the name of Congress project, 
please keep your hand up. Okay. Next, if you know what kind of service Congress provides, please keep your hand up. Okay, thank you. Finally, uh, if you use Congress before, please keep your hand up. Okay, I should explain what is Congress first. <laughs> thank you, everyone, down your hand. Okay, uh, first of all, what is Congress? Uh, Congress is a governance as a service. Congress offers a admin an ability to define their policy to manage their cloud, and the policy controls their cloud by defined policy. And now I think you have a question. What kind of policy can Congress manage? Additionally, the phrase policy of definition is different based on your background. Um, but there is no single answer for that. But you don't mind that because Congress aims to solve your problem with any policy to any service. And this is a uh, Overview of Congress. Congress is roughly divided to three parts. First one is API. The admin, cloud admin can define their policy via API call. And second part is a data source driver described in the bottom of this picture. A data source driver is in charge of collecting data from the cloud service. In this picture, Nova, Neutron, Keystone, and security system run in their, their cloud. And the data source driver collects the data from this service. And the third, third part of Congress is policy engine. Policy engine is in charge of evaluating the policy defined by the admin and uh, with the corrected data by data source driver. And then if any policy violation happens, policy engine take action to fix the violation in the cloud service. In this picture, policy engine tell Nova data source driver, hey, please fix this problem in Nova service. So now you, I think you know what is Congress and how, we, how Congress works. So this is a requirement for the inspector in the doctor, in the doctor and uh, that is a, a gap, result of gap analysis with the uh, inspector and uh, Congress in Liberty release. And there are three requirements for inspector. First one is the first failure notifications. But there is one gap for con Congress with inspector. Congress pulled uh, data from cloud service periodically and evaluate it periodically. So there is uh, the gap is real-time policy evaluating and policy enforcement. And second requirement is um, to get the mapping of a physical hardware error to the logical failure. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's easy to do by Congress because Congress has uh, every data of your crowd. So if you write a rule to map the events to the, uh, the logical failure, we can achieve this requirement. So there is no gaps. The third requirement is adaptability. Um, con and inspector is in charge of and get the mapping with the event to the uh, cloud services error. But 
the definition of error is different among each company. So we need this adaptability for inspector. But the adaptability is easy to achieve because if you write a policy, it's fit to your definition, it will be achieved. So there is one gap with, oh, no. there is one gap between the Congress with inspector. It is real-time policy evaluating and enforcement. So next, I want to show you how we achieve this, uh, how we solve this problem, uh, solve this gap in the Mitaka release of Congress. So I've implemented a push type data source driver, which enable services outside of Congress can push event to the Congress. So this is an overview of push type data source driver. Another service top of this slide push, can push the data to the driver and then the driver send the events to policy engine and policy engine evaluate uh, re-evaluate their policy immediately. And we've also implemented doctor driver for inspector. Uh, this is the workflow how Congress and the doctor driver work as an inspector. First, the monitor in the gray box, send the e hardware failure event to the Congress. And Dr. Driver receive this event and make a list, event list of Dr. Data. And next, the policy engine receives a list of failure event in the hardware and re-evaluate it to the Logical failure, mean, meaning that the virtualization layers failure, and then it detects which VM is affected the event. Finally, Nova, uh, sorry, policy engine tell Nova data source driver, hey, call no, uh, Nova the markdown API to that fail, failure host and a reset, call reset status API for the affected VM. This is the details of Dr. Driver's schema. Uh, upper side of the table shows the schema of events table in Dr. Driver. And the lower side table shows the, an example of an event sent by the monitor. So let's move on to the demo from Ryota. And before taking over, I want to say, I think this is the first implementation to get a, a translation from a, hardware error to the virtualization layer error. Thank you. Okay, well done. Thank you, Tommy, Masa, and all the developer working on this uh, framework to, to realize. And now you can do the uh, failure detection and you may perform the reactions. And I'm gonna show a demo using uh, those features developed in Liberty and Mintaka Cycle. And you can also do the same. It's open source. Okay, so we're gonna, uh, I'm gonna show the two scenario. Uh, one scenario will uh, detect failure when it, the one of the redundant nick pulled down. And the scenario two is uh, Recognize failure when the whole the set set of the redundant nick ports down, and using the same sequence, 
uh, first make the nick failure or nick port down then the automatically it monitor detects the a hardware failure event and notified to the Congress, and Congress change state of the uh, affected VMs to error in Nova using a new uh, API and existing API for the for the servers, and also the Nova send out the notification of state change and similar consume that. Submit an AODH, consume that, and uh, uh, send notification to the VMs uh, or application managers <coughs> to tell the VMs failure. And then the application manager will <coughs> perform healing process. In this demo, <coughs> we are serving a video with a video server and switch the act standby node, and the end user can continue to watch the movie. Okay. Okay. Let's start. So we have uh, uh, seven screens here, so you can see horizon. You, you may be familiar with and uh, some rule ex explanation in Congress uh, console in service panel and application manager logs. And you, on the right side, right side top, you can see the uh, end user monitors that are turning, keep turning, and we are also showing the console. For, for generating failure. Okay. So for the service panel and application manager logs uh, can be used in for, for this uh, middle of the, oh, sorry, okay. Horizon, start from Horizon view. We can see the hypervisor, two hypervisors right now and each uh, enabled and up. And currently we have three VMs, one, uh, two for the VM with act standby fashion and also running a VNF manager, uh, application manager. Okay, then we'll issue the command to the nick down. When we do the similar demo in the uh, last year, we uh, remove the cable, but for this demo, we had, uh, we are <coughs> down the interface from the command. So now you can see the uh, green one, the, uh, which is a data flow. So uh, video sub about zero are uh, subbing the video and the user consuming that data. And yes, so we, occurred, we inserted one nick failure, and this is a, a rule for the, uh, yeah, stop now, for the Congress. So uh, this is a rule. When the uh, doctor driver receive two event, uh, we type uh, host nick one down and host nick two down. Then the host uh, will be uh, will be error, become error. So this is a rule, okay. And now we make the, the second, uh, uh, sorry, the first nick down and it remain running. But the Congress already received the uh, nick one down, first nick down. And instance will be remained inactive. 
and hypervisor as well. So now it, it not recognize the failure. And oh, it's gone. So second nick down, you can see the uh, application manager received the failure event and switch the state of the services. And for the Congress, yeah, it received two events. So uh, it received the second nick down, and you can see the time here. It's in a uh, one second, so maybe uh, 800 milliseconds. So we're refreshing uh, very frequently for this application manager, but uh, basically the application uh, manager will be uh, <coughs> will receiving the uh, event from the uh, OpenStack in here AODH. And yes, VM is become error state. You know, so hypervisor as well. So it this is case two. In the case two, uh, I, I, in case two uh, we recognize a uh, uh, failure with one redundant Nick port down, and the hypervisor will get him back to enabled and up, and server is active again. But this is for initialization. And yes, Congress also initialized, uh, cleaned up all the event that we used previous one. And now rule is changed once we recognize the host area error when when the Congress received Nick one down and also we, when we receive Nick two down, the Congress will recognize host as area. So we change the rule here. Now we make the Fast Nick port down right now, yeah, and it fires the notifications. And the service is switched, and the uh, movie are continuing. You can see. Okay, and the Congress also has the time we received the uh, raw event from the monitors, and. Application manager also had the uh, uh, time, which received the time. And it's, again, less than one second. Okay, that's it. And yeah, we, we make this uh, demo with uh, almost a uh, whole open source code. Uh, we do bit, bit, uh, scripting for the application manager but it might be available in our uh, repository, which means we are working in the open with Docta project. It it integrating OpenStack and other stuff, and and we also doing uh, start from requirement study and gap analysis and proposing a concrete feature to the OpenStack uh, individual project project and develop it, and working as a OpenStack community. So uh, you may have the question, but uh, I would like to introduce one uh, my colleagues working for this demo. Uh, Suzuki-san, Suzuki -san, can you stand up? <laughs> yeah, he and uh, one more, another colleague are working for this demo, and we also have the uh, doctor uh, project member here, so if you have a question, you can you can ask uh, right after this session. Okay, thank you all, thank you for coming.